Well, hi, everybody. Um, I know it's been a while. I've been a little sick lately, but um, uh, I started this uh, video with the intention of collecting rainwater and uh, looking for radioisotope. After some uh, contamination issue in my uh, collection bucket, I decided to do uh, something else. So this uh, this video starts like this, and then, then it cuts to something different. So I changed the grading on my uh, spectrometer. So this is a 600 line uh, per millimeters uh, uh, grading. It's made by uh, Thor Lab. They were super nice and ship uh, very fast. They even included um, a bunch of treats and candies in the, along with the grading. So anyway, we should see a broader spectrum and lose a little bit in the resolution, but I think it's it's okay. We I, I really wanted to see a, a broader spectrum. So after removing the old uh, uh, grading with some difficulties, I installed uh, the new one. And uh, I'm not going to get into the details of the whole alignment uh, process, which is long and tedious. It's, I mean, there's plenty of videos and procedures available online for this. So I already have a video on the uh, calibration, and we can see the, the spectrum is a lot broader than, um, than before. We can see on either side of the visible area, closer to uh, infrared and uh, ultraviolet, which is uh, what I wanted. So this, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So I tried to see the uh, uh, spectrum of a black light, and uh, sure enough, the 370 nanometer main peak uh, uh, show up, and even the tiny little one down here at uh, 4 or 5 from uh, Mercury. So uh, with that in mind, I went to the, my uh, local hardware store and purchased a few items, uh, mostly PVC pipes. I thought I made a, a, an emission spectrometer. So this is uh, not too complicated. All we need is a chamber uh, under vacuum with a couple of uh, electrodes uh, sticking into it and a viewport to see what essentially is a plasma created inside. So basically the atoms left in the chamber, mostly oxygen and nitrogen, are being ionized by the uh, high voltage. So ionization process uh, involves an atom losing or gaining electrons. These electrons change shells and uh, either up or down. When moving up, uh, they absorb energy. When they're moving down closer to the nucleus, they release some energy. Now, the amount of energy involved is in a few electrovolts, uh, so this is only the outer shell of being involved in those uh, processes. Uh, the energy released in the form of a photon is specific to those uh, atoms, so we can determine what type of atom are present. The spectrum can get fairly complicated, so it's... Uh, it's sometimes difficult to uh, really identify any particular uh, element. So since we start from air, we have mostly nitrogen and uh, oxygen being ionized. And here we have uh, those uh, peaks being called out by the software. So I thought, hey, why not uh, give it a try with different substances? So I have uh, here some uh, 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 high purity lithium iodide and um, put it into the uh, emission spectrometer. And sure enough, uh, I'm totally able to see those lines, albeit some of them with less confidence than others, but uh, this right here is at 100% for lithium. It's pretty good. Uh, iodide is hiding throughout the spectrum here. Then I thought, hey, what about uh, barium? So here's uh, barium oxide. I was hoping to see more from, from barium, but probably some of it fell off the electrodes, so there's not much to be seen here. And then I tried to see calcium and uh, and phosphorus from uh, some some uh, calcium phosphate I have, and uh, yes, uh, it's uh, possible to see it. Now it all comes down to the calibration, and uh, the better the calibration, the more accurate the test would be. It's it's, it's working pretty well, so I'm, I'm very satisfied and very happy with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more fun science stuff, and I uh, will see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.